What's up? This is Patrick at Radicards. It is December 14, 2013, and we just got back from Frank and Sons Collectible Show here. They're in um, City of Industry, California. I'm with my buddy Anthony. He does through the mail uh, autographs, and I do, as you know, Frank Thomas, 90s inserts. I do a little bit of vintage, but I just, I just dabble. So today, we're going to take our time and we're going to review what we bought today. We got uh, a lot of cool stuff here, so I'm going to tell you about what I bought and then Anthony's gonna take it away and tell you what he got so as soon as I got there I got I found um, a 1998 Pinnacle Epics uh, Ryan Samber this is all-star epics now the players in the set they have like you can get as many as 12 different versions of their your players card if, if they're in the two different series the all-star epics and the base epics um, there's like a purple there's an orange and there's an emerald for uh, four different versions of the card it's kind of cool so I picked up that. I also picked up a uh, 1984 Topps traded Brett Saberhagen XRC. So this is pretty cool. This is something I bought even though I already have because Anthony was telling me he does um, through the mail autographs for a very small fortune of all of $5. <laughs> so this is going to be really fun to send through the mail and get the signature. And um, also I picked up a uh, gosh, 1992? Yeah, 1992 Classic Best Mike Piazza um, insert card. When he's played for the San Antonio Missions. Is it missions? Yeah. Like the silver card on there. It's really nice. I like this. This is cool. A young Mike Piazza. I picked up a Mike Piazza on the Mets. This would be a uh, Topps Finest from 2000. Uh, and uh, this is the Dreamcast. This is when Finest was utilizing the Dufex technology that the Pinnacle uh, uh, sort of popularized in the early 90s. So this is a really kind of exciting card. I like the design that they're utilizing here. You can kind of see it there. Picked up two cards from the famous, at least to me, 1994 Leaf Gold Stars, uh, Fred McGriff and Carlos Berga. Now this set back in 1994, I used to open up a lot of this product. Never got a single one of these. I always wanted to, and they were really hard to pull. Um, I've heard stories of people opening at least eight boxes and trying to get one, and they got two out of eight boxes. Usually they just seated one every four boxes. Which to me, when I was 12, when this stuff came out, was uh, was a lot of money I didn't have. In fact, it was maybe one, maybe two packs I was able to afford. So I did put this set together in 2011. It took me a couple months uh, because they're very inexpensive now. Even though they're numbered to 10,000, uh, insertion ratio is one for every four boxes. So you can just imagine how much product was created in 1994 from 1994 Leaf. So this is really exciting to get two of those more, two more of those. Um, also, I'm doing a little bit of Donruss Elite. Donruss Elite's a very interesting uh, set because it started in 1991 with Donruss, 1992 Donruss, 93, etc. And their numbering is that the first set from 91, cards 1 through 9, second set from 92, cards 10 through 18. So they went in chunks. This is uh, from 1996, I believe. This is card 65. This is the Tim Salmon. The very hard pulls, again, out of 10,000. Um, oh, this is kind of fun. This is a, what is it, like a city release that, that, that was maybe um, circulated through the Atlanta, Georgia area, Brian Klesko, non-licensed by the MLBPA, because as you can see there, um, the team logo has been airbrushed out of his hat. So that's kind of a cool set signed by Ryan, Ryan Klesko. Kind of a unique piece. Um, and Anthony sort of turned me on to this one, although I have an Eno Slaughter autograph. I figured I'd put this one in, in the collection as well. It's got a white signature on it. Um, this is from 92 Conlon, and Anthony was saying that these Conlon cards, because they're 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 kind of glossy on the top, that if you get them signed by a traditional Sharpie, like a fine point, they bubble up. Isn't that right, Anthony? Yeah. Unless so, they're not prepared correctly. Unless, okay, so, and what's a good way to prepare a, 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 a glossy card for a signature? Normally what I do is I just use some baby powder or something, <laughs> put a little dab on there and rub it in, and like, you can just wipe it off on your jeans or whatever, but... In a fix or a pinch, I've been at a place where I haven't pre prepped my cards yet. So you just kind of get a little greasy thumb and just rub it all over. Not the whole card itself, but probably just along the middle, like where you're going to get your autograph. And it seemed to work pretty well. But in this case, they used a nice paint pen. And that really worked well. Usually, you know, I've seen people use like those gold or silver paint pens that, you know, it's, it's hit or miss. You don't know. But this looks like it was a white paint pen, which is pretty unique. And it came out well. Now, he's passed away. How long ago did he die? I don't know. Early 90s, I'd say. Really? 
Because he played in the lot. 40s, didn't he? Oh, yeah, probably before that. Yeah? yeah. What does it say? But yeah, 38 to... Uh, got 53. That's... Oh, wow, he's wrong for a while. A long time ago. So, yeah, that's kind of a cool card to have. Also picked up a um, 85 Opeachy Ryan, uh, Nolan Ryan. Classic Nolan Ryan. I already have this card, but I got it again anyway, just because it was at the right price point. This is a 1992 upper deck All-Star Fan Fest Gold Parallel. Frank Thomas. Gonna add that to my doubles box. Can't have, an, can't have enough Frank Thomas cards. Uh, I also picked up um, three Tulsa Drillers, 1989 Sammy Sosa minor league cards. I just like this card. It's got great colors. I like the blue, the, the red, white, and blue there. So these cards are in great shape, too. Classic shots of a young Sammy Sosa. I also picked up this really kind of a just obscure Chicks Modern All Stars Bo Jackson card. For, it looks like almost like a promotional item for Dawson's Printing Inc. So this is kind of a cool piece to add to the Bo Jackson collection. That was all I picked up today. I hope you enjoyed my review of my collection that I acquired today. Now Anthony is going to talk about. You know what he got today. He does a lot of through the mail autographs, so a lot of what he got today is our cards to be prepped to be sent through the mail to the players to have signed and then sent back. So Anthony, why don't you take it away? Thanks, dude. You're welcome. I um, I I enjoy vintage cards, and through the years, I've the more I've learned about them and collected. I'm a Tigers fan, so collected team sets and stuff, and kind of you know you get to the point where you can't get any more team sets going, and the uh, the stars are out of my price range. So my favorite way to enjoy vintage cards now are to uh, buy the cheap ones and send them through the mail for some autographs. So I got a bunch of these guys today, the rookie stars, you know, the, the three-player bases on there. And um, I like that 70 tops. That one's pretty cool. It's really With cool. A little squiggly W. For the Senators there. It's funny they're using that same squiggly W now for the Washington Nationals. It's pretty cool. Huh? Yeah, and I like this guy's name here. And you know what's funny is he was the main reason I got this. Dick Such, he signs through the mail. He's a great signer. And I haven't sent to him yet. So, um, you know, the, the goal is to get, of course, an autograph on every card. But in some cases, um, like I know on this one, John Matlock and Buzz Cap are both signed. So, it's pretty cool to get two guys on there. And um, usually when I send to a guy... I mean, if it's already going out to them, um, you know, there's no telling if the auto is going to get smudged in the mail or, you know, the player might smudge it himself or something might get, you know, creased or crinkled or wrinkled as coming back. So I always like to throw in something extra. So in this case, I, you know, any of the guys, the mid, uh, you know, early 60 Yankees, I got a super beater Yankee team card. Uh, 64 for 50 cents. So I'm going to throw this in with a couple guys, you know, if I can get three, four, five autos on here, you know, it'll get to the point where they don't fit anymore. But it's really cool. A little something extra to throw in. It's too bad you can't get all the players on that, too, because some of those guys are deceased now, right? Yeah. And that's my whole thing. It's a race against the clock, you know. Guys, as, uh, that's you know, a good point. we all get older. Yeah. No one gets out alive. I got uh, all kinds of guys today. You don't see too many poses of catchers with their hats on backwards. I think uh, Junior, Ken Griffey, was the, probably the first guy to really popularize the the backwards hat. That's a good point. That's a and, cool card. Uh, 63 tops. Pretty cool, Jim Campbell. Yeah. We got a Leo Posada. Um, you know, Leo Posada had a bunch of cards in his time, but I like to get him like the Kansas City A's hat. I love that. There's something different. Um, also has a nice spot for a nice auto on there. Pretty excited. Um, again, like I said, I like to, if I'm going to be sending one in the mail, I may as well send, you know, two, maybe three at the most. I don't like to ask too much of the older guys. But this Joe Gaines, I have a couple Joe Gaines that I've been holding on to for a while to get out. And uh, I dig the Baltimore, the old, you know, just classic Baltimore Big B hat. Something definitely different than the new uh, animated bird that they got now. Yeah, it's kind of cool that they've got, you know, um, looks kind of like the Brooklyn Dodgers or Bo uh, Boston Red Sox B that they're using. And maybe that had something to do with, with them moving into a different logo. I mean, I don't know, actually. But uh, here's a more yeah. modern version of the Baltimore Orioles logo. Got the bird that they uh, they went with for a while, went away, and then uh, came back recently in the last couple of years. A little bit even more animated. Yeah. Almost whimsical now, if you will. I dig the older guys, too. Um, it's always funny 
nicknames were big and also how names changed through the years. We got Zeke Bella. I don't, I've never known a Zeke in my whole life. Never met a Zeke, but that, that's pretty cool. Another one of the, uh, the possible multiplayer autos that I could get. I know uh, three guys on here. I know Bunny, of course, the whole fan where he signs. Art Dittmer signs. And um, I'm pretty sure also um, Hal Brown. Hal Brown signs. Um, again, just some just some commons, just some beater commons that I'm, I'm hoping to, to spiff up with some autos. 71 tops, good stuff. Um, 62. Hal Colstad. Never heard of the guy, not until today. And um, I'm going to get it out to him. He signs? Yep. No kidding. I dig these. Oh, yeah, those are 1960 cool. tops, the little the sideways photos, little orange guys. Carl Mathias. A lot of good... Um, a lot of good rookies came out of that 60 tops horizontal oh, variety yeah. um, subset. Got Carl Yastrzemski, uh, Jim Cott. Uh, gosh, isn't oh not would be 61. I was gonna say a Willie Stargell. Right. Yeah, yeah there's a bunch. They're he's, good is looking. he 60 or 61? Stargell. Yeah. I think he's 60. <laughs> Damn. It all becomes a blur after a while. Yeah, they also look the same. <laughs> not bad. Picked up a couple older guys, a little more vintage, vintage, and uh, I got a 56. Learn Pepper. Dig the name. Love that old stuff. Hugh McLaurin Pepper is his full name, in case you wondered. Tom Qualters. I had another Tom Qualters. I've been hanging out in my uh, my prep box, ready to go, and I figured I may as well just throw an extra one in there while I'm at it. Now, some of these players, they charge per card, Anthony, or is it, you can put in three cards and then send them their required fee, and then they'll sign all three and send them back? Um, well, you know, as far as, I, yeah, there are some guys that they charge per card, and they're mm -hmm. pretty strict about it, too. You know, if they charge five bucks and you throw in two cards, you're yeah. just going to get one back signed. And then there's other guys that um, they sign, maybe it might be for a foundation or, you know, just for some type of, you know, animal rescue or something like that and you might send them five cards and throw in five bucks and they'll sign um you never know some guys just there's they're feeling nice and they'll just return your cash sometimes but the majority of the guys the good old boys i think they just uh they enjoy getting some mail and some um, back and forth with the fans and a lot of guys they sign for free carl scheib is one of the old guys i've been waiting to, to send to him for a while and i found this 54 Bowman. It was just in beautiful shape today, and I'm going to get it out to him as soon as I can. It's really good. It's a great way to re-enjoy your cards, is singing through the mail and having it signed. You can almost, it almost adds an extra degree of life to the card. You know, being yeah. a collector, we, I'm sure we all, you know, eBay or wherever it is that we buy on the secondary market, we're waiting for mail, and we love to open mail. Yeah. But to actually have some type of interaction with these old stars, or, you know, stars from the past before we were even a, a, a thought in the mind of anybody. It's pretty, I, I have a great time. I think it's great. I love the interaction. I, I picked up a, a post Bob Wilson. I'm working on a 59 Tigers team card that I have three or four autos on. And Bob Wilson is a great signer. And he signs small, so I think that he'll be able to definitely fit somewhere in here between the lines. And uh, Dick Cole. That'll be a good card to get signed because it's so brightly colored yeah i think any and that's the thing it's always uh you, you never know what kind of pen you're going to get some guys they might use you know the the autograph industry standard as far as a blue sharpie goes and it might look beautiful they might use a black they might use a roller they might use the ballpoint you never know but on some cards like this one in particular anything they use is going to show up well and I'll, uh, I'll be really happy i also picked up i've been putting it off for a while and i know that people have gotten some um some returns from him. I'm um, not sure if they're go signed or else if it's the real deal, but I picked up a Hulk Hogan. Uh, Terry is a pretty good signer, I guess. Hopefully it's real through the mail. And um, Pat was telling me that there's a couple different backgrounds on this guy. I guess there's a blue and a green. There's a green uh, version of that card. As you can see, this one's yellow. There's also the Opeachy version. Uh, so you can actually get a couple different versions of that card. I think in terms of getting that signed, um, that particular card with the yellow background is probably going to be the best best one to get. It'll show up really well. Yeah, hopefully it'll pop. Yeah, yeah, it'll pop too. And you know, I was telling you earlier that you know I got my Eno Slaughter signed in white. Well, of course I bought it that way, but he signed it in white. So if you get like a dark colored card and you have him sign it like a silver or white, you can kind of like still get a good good contrast there. So something, of course, you might have already considered, but I just like to bring it up. Heck yeah, makes sense. 
I don't do a whole lot of the newer stuff. Pat, you know, just showed you a bunch of really cool new stuff or newer in the last 15, 20 years. It's more modern. I um, These are cool. I picked these guys up. I just thought it was funny. Um, it was a little set of 10, and uh, it came, it even had the uh, the checklist. Yeah. What was I say? The uh, California All-Stars Big Apple Card Company. So, going through these cards, it's funny. They're only players who played for a California team. We got Wally Joyner. They're little sketch cards that I don't... There's nothing really on the back other than their name and their position and then the company that yeah. who produced it. Super obscure. We got Joyner. We got a Jackson. I'm wondering what year these are. Canseco. It looks like an 80s, early... Mid, late 80s Canseco, like 86 or 87. Maybe. Jose Rijo. Which, you know, he was a... Uh, I liked Jose Rio yeah, for the totally. A's. Will Clark. Chili Davis. So I'm guessing this might... I'm, I'm probably going to guess this is an 87 set. Chili Davis is still on the Giants, and Will Clark is considered a star at that point. That's right there. That sounds about right. At least roughly. Or Hershiser. Pete Guerrero. These are just... I think they're just fun. And if for some reason, I mean... If they got a little bit of gloss to them, but they're they're older. I think um, if I ever do run into any of these guys, which I know Steve Garvey is in that set, um, you know he does a lot of signings, a lot of free signings around town, and I uh, might run into him. And the Hall of Famer Tony Gwynn. Tony Gwynn. Gotta something fun, something different. Um, really? I just thought they were cool. I like to draw, you know, little little sketch cards. I thought it was I thought it was interesting. And for a buck for the ten of them, something oddball. I I picked it up. Can't beat it. Cannot beat it. I did grab a couple of modern cards today. It's not really in, you know, did you go a big those habit of me. Okay. Nah. I picked up, a, you know, again, I'm a Tigers fan, so I picked up from the Ted Williams upper deck set. Um, this Al Kaline, Remember 68, and that's when the Tigers won the, the World Series against the Cardinals. And it's got, I've never seen this one before. Uh, I don't know anything about it. It looks almost like it has a maybe a, a, a type of Dufex look to it. Um Big Nolan Ryan fan, being a kid in the 80s and the early 90s, I, I think we all were Nolan Ryan fans. He came up on these. 81 and 83, Opeechee. Opeechee. So, and, um, I mean, of course, I, you know, it's a it's a staple in my collection, you know, any Nolan Ryan cards. But if I come across an Opeechee, which I never got the bust Opeechee packs when I was a kid, so I pick them up. I'm also a Pudge fan. Um, I have a few hundred Pudges. I would never, uh, after seeing... Patrick's collection of Frank Thomas, I would never consider myself a super collector of <laughs> any sort or way, so I'm not going to claim that. But if I ever find any uh, Pudge inserts or anything, you know, serial numbered, I pick them up. Um, I don't, again, I'm not a super modern guy, so I don't know a whole lot about them and ratios and all that good stuff, but hey, they're shiny, serial numbered guys, and they look hot. I'm a big Pudge fan, so I'm all over them, and, uh, and I don't collect any. Uh, Football, like, I'm not, not big time, no sets. When I was a kid, I bought a few packs here and there. But Barry Sanders is always a star, and uh, I'm from Detroit, a big fan I was. And as I was telling Patrick, and the only football jersey I ever owned was a Barry Sanders jersey. So I'm just starting to uh, to get around and get a couple berries. Again, I don't really know much about the newer stuff. Yeah, it's kind of good to diversify, you know. Anthony, we were talking about this uh, earlier today, that, that sometimes we have to kind of pick projects out for ourselves to kind of work on from time to time. You know, Anthony works on vintage team sets for, for Tigers. I got into doing that with the White Sox for a while. That's kind of been put on a, you know, it's set aside for now, so I'm working on something else. But um, it's cool to see Anthony pick up some, some football stuff because I know he's a he's a vintage baseball guy. So it's nice to kind of diversify and change it up a little bit. Variety is sort of a spice of life. That's what I love about this hobby too is that you never know what you're going to find and everything is sort of... Uh, there's so much to choose from. It's such a large variety of different units of things. So, oh yeah, and then really if, you're, if you're hardcore on something, like getting autos through the mail, and you start to get burned out a little bit, there's always something different. Some uh, some new football, some vintage football. It's all over the place, and uh, Frank's is the perfect place to uh, to to hit that full-on diversification, if that's even a real word. Yeah, I mean that's, that's <laughs> a great word. Great word too, Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> great word. Now I also I um. I picked up some other cards today. I didn't know I was going to pick up these cards today. <laughs> right. Let's see it. What do you get? I, I don't know yet. I surprised Anthony with, with um, an abundance of things that I knew he would enjoy. Um, so 
I just, he didn't know I put these in his bag. <laughs> I picked up my bag of stuff that I bought and we were talking about that we were going to talk about them. And all of a sudden I found a brick of other stuff in there. And right away, I am a, I'm a Piazza fan. Piazza on the Dodgers mostly, but just yeah. Piazza in general. And uh, Go ahead and open her up. I'm just going to dip into them. I have no yeah. idea what I'm going to find. Some awesome stuff in there. I have a few hundred Piazzas as well, but Patrick always seems to find the ones that I don't have. It's, <laughs> it's odd. Do what I can. Do what I can. So I dig these. Little collectors. Some Ultra. I love him when he's on the Dodgers. Oh, yeah. It's just good love stuff him. there. Anyone. It's random. Uh, it, as common as it can be, I don't care. I, I love Piazza on the Dodgers. This is... Some random. Oh, nice. Just some of those sport flicks there for you. A little sport flick action. So on Radic Cards, I've been kind of breaking boxes and, you know, reviewing product and whatever. And, you know, when I go through everything that I've opened, I'll always pull out, I'll pull out some Tigers and Piazza and yeah, Irod, uh, Ivan Rodriguez for, for Anthony here and kind of just set them aside because, you know, he'll love them and, you know, and enjoy them much more. So I, I make another collector happy. And you did. Thank you, bro. These are this is this is some good stuff here. Mickey Tettleton, you can't go wrong. I loved Mickey Tettleton. I was, we were talking about Mickey Tettleton today. I don't know how many people ever talk about Mickey Tettleton, but I do. Yeah, you know it's funny. He started with the A's in '85. Um, actually, he's found in some product in '85. '85 Clear Update. '85. Gosh, I think he's in the, yeah '85 Tops Traded. Mm -hmm. And his rookie card is considered '86 Tops. Um, so. Uh, and then he's, he got traded to the Tigers, I think, and then, when did this, was that, in the 90s? When was that, that he started with the Tigers? Yeah, I think his first year was 91. Was it? Yeah. Okay. So I got some always Cecil cool. Fielder. A little, kind of, uh, I just threw it on the floor. <laughs> right. So, uh, that one. it's all good. These are pretty durable cards. You got the Cecil Fielder, 95 Sport Flicks. What else you got there? Tony Phillips. I love Tony Phillips. One of my top 10 players, Tony Phillips. I don't know if people admit to that. No, we had a coke habit or something. But. Some 95 the Leafs there. A couple some trammels. Look at that. Can't go bad with tram. Come on. Great design in the 95 Leafs. Come on. Huge fan. All kinds of guys. Up here. <sighs> Sean Bergman. I mean, <laughs> nobody. <laughs> I know that you would remember these guys. I'm like, who's Sean Bergman? All these guys. <laughs> Mike Piazza. And then some more Piazza. Yeah, that's just the first brick. You got another brick to go through. Let's get cracking. All right, yeah. I, you know what? My bad. I was. I'm kidding. I was just staring at these things. No, it's cool. It's funny it's thing good. about the hobbies that you, you get so excited about, you know, little things. It almost helps you critique your attention to detail, even. So this is kind of cool. So I opened up a box of, um, oh yes, 97 score this hobby reserve. Yards. These are good. These are really cool. Back in 2010, I cracked a half a case of uh, Bowman Jumbo. Um, so I, you know, I've got a bunch of cards in here I remember pulling out of whatever. Some newer stuff. Oh, yes. Some Miggy. Hey. Can't go 92 wrong Bowman Miggy. throwbacks. Polly. Muscle de Blanc. Everybody loves him. Chet Lemon 84 Fleer action. That's good stuff. Chet the Jet. We got 84 World Series year. I think he was a two or three time All Star with the Tigers. Another Piazza. Verlander. I love the Verlander. John Cerruti. I always enjoy John Cerruti. May you rest in peace, John Cerruti. Oh, really? That's too bad. Oh, we've got some uh, 96 Zenith, one of my favorite Cynical sets. Cynical Zenith. These are beautiful. I don't. I have to say, I don't think I ever busted any of these packs when I was a kid. I might have been out of the hobby at about that time. I think I was probably collecting gag yeah, girls or something, like in 96, 97. So. I was out of the <laughs> hobby doing that, too, I think, in uh, between 98 and 03. I was you know, going to college and skateboarding and doing other things, but yeah, I, was, yeah, I grew up a little bit. Cecil Fielder. Come on. Got to love it. Yeah, as a Tiger fan, um, we're no longer the butt of the jokes. We're not the Pirates, for God's sakes. But we... Um, we did have some good players. We didn't win any championships, but we had some cool players in the 90s. Well, thanks, bro. There's, there's, uh, there's another break in here. What the heck is going oh, on? Did I put three in there? <laughs> of course. Keep it going. So I gave him three bricks this time around. Two, four bricks. I guess there are four. There are two packs oh of two. So you're going to be keep going here. 
I'll put these over here. Oh, this is gonna be hours of enjoyment for me. Blue Whitaker. Oh yes, that was for my break That's from '91 Leaf Series Two. That's nice. '86 Fleer. Pack pull. On Berenguer. That's good stuff. I like that. It's in great shape. Mm -hmm. Any of these guys you can send through for TTMs? Uh, Juan Berenguer. Very good. He does sign through the mail. Oh, this is a Tiffany. Oh, I do not have this card. Now, as well as being a Tigers fan, I am a Dodgers fan. Tigers are my number one, but I'm also a Dodgers fan. Hence, that's why I'm a Piazza collector. And uh, I don't collect too many Piazzas if he's not on the Dodgers. We had a good amount of Dodgers in here. That's for my uh, 97 Pinnacle Express break. Pudge. Nice. Love Pudge. Oh, these are nice, too. Yeah, those are cool. It's a really kind of a, a strange set that Pinnacle released in 97. It's pretty, though. It is pretty. Even the Bubba Trammell's pretty. I yeah. like it. It's That's good stuff. Good. Tony Clark? Tony Clark. There you go. Good stuff. What else we got here? Travis Fryman. He was a hot star in 1990. Uh, one. I th yeah, I think he came up in 90. I think he had a trade in 90. Um, oh, that's up. right. Yeah, that's right. Traded. I remember when he had his first home run in the center field at Tiger Stadium. Brian Hunter. A little speedster. Happened to that guy. Another pudge. Now, Brian Hunter, Hunter did he, was he the, did he start his career with the Twins? Or was he right out of the gate with the uh, Detroit? He was with Houston first. That's I right. Believe, it was Houston. So. You're right. Astros. Bobby Higginson. This is good stuff, man. Thank you. Hey, no problem. Davy Cruz. Davy Cruz. I like Davy Cruz. He was high in uh, Rookie of the Year voting, and then uh, no one else ever heard of him. How long was his career, would you say? Um, is it a brief career? I, he probably ended up playing about eight years. Eight years? I to the Padres after. Chad Curtis. He's Now he's known for... Not good things, but Chad Curtis. Really? I didn't I don't know much about his likes background. the young ladies. I don't wanna we young don't have to go there. Ladies. Yeah. That's More John Cerruti. I, you know, John I don't Cerruti. I don't have this John Cerruti card. Oh interesting. Okay, so that's from 90, 91 Leaves Series Two. Bill Gullickson, twenty game winner with the Tags. Andy Allenson, I do I need him. I don't have an Andy Allenson auto. I collect um, Tiger team sets as well as um, Tiger autos. I want to get everybody who ever uh, had a Tiger card in auto, which is impossible, but it's fun to do. Inky, Pete Caviglia. I like that guy's last name. Is it Incaviglia? I thought it was Incaviglia. <laughs> is it not? Incaviglia. Incaviglia. Yeah. I've been pronouncing it wrong all these years. <laughs> what were you calling him? Incaviglia. Incaviglia. You yeah. know what? That's pretty good. That's like or Oral Hershenreimer. You know, it's, Hershenreimer. It's a little different. Come on, I didn't butcher it that bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good, though. Mike Hanneman. This is good stuff, man. I yeah, appreciate man. it. Another um, an, another Tiki Metalton. Tiki. So that would be a 1994 <laughs> uh, Collector's Choice series. Are these series? Are these two? Uh, yeah. I think it's I think it's series two. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't bust any packs that year. Oh, so. dude, I'm sorry. It's kind of a blur now. I opened a lot of product this week, and so I'm kind of like, <laughs> it's all like sensory overload now in my brain. Got one more brick going. Yeah, getting through it, man. That was a, that was a big stack, too. It was. I um, I don't know how everybody stores their cards or um, files them away. I do everything in alphabetical order, except for my Tiger Team sets. And um, I'm going to have a blast putting all these cards in al alphabetical order tonight. Nice. He's a lot of uh, bone chromes, it looks like. Adam Wilk. Those are nice. He'd come up with a big team. Gustavo Nunez. Don't know much about him. Cody Sater White. I do. I like these cards. There's a Cy Young for you. That guy did the Cy Young? Max Scherzer. Really? Yeah. How long ago? This year. Really? Heck yeah. Got a bunch of them in there for you. Heck yeah. Rick Porcello. Tons of those. There's a gold, oh, there's a gold version. There. So these are the gold. So in 19, 2010, Bowman did various paper colored parallels of their cards and different refractors. And it was just kind of a medley of JB. different versions of the cards you could get. Jed Damon, when he was Oh, how do people forget? 
Detroit Tigers. Johnny Damon was a Tiger for a minute and a half. Scott Sizemore. Nice. A couple more Miggies. Austin Jackson. You got a bunch of those. There's a blue one in there, I think, too. Oh, nice. Yeah. So it's kind of cool. It's the blue version. Heck yeah. Mags. I'm also a Mags collector. I, uh,. I collect on-card autos, certified autos of mags. I probably only have, I probably have 35 or 40. Wow, really? Yeah. Certified autographs of Maglio? Yeah. That's that's pretty ambitious. What, who's this guy? Brent DeLugak, if I said that right. That's the way I've always said it. DeLugak? Okay. DeLugak. Yeah. DeLugak. Some more of those classic uh, hobby reserves. These are cool. I really like the, uh, the gold uh, oval that you find there on those cards. See, the Melvin Nieves. This hobby reserve card is actually mimics, parallels exactly the Series 2 set of 97 score, except for the addition of the thicker cardstock and the uh, gold foil. Phil Nevin, local guy. He's from Fullerton. Oh, really? Yeah. No kidding. That's where we are right now. We're in Fullerton, we're in California. Fullerton, California. California. Yeah. <clears throat> Another Brian Hunter. Nice. Nice. Let me take a look at that. That's a nice one. Look at that. It's a good, it's good a great shot, shot of him. And yeah, it does feature him. Shows he's on the Astros' first three years of his career. That's right. Cool. Yeah, that's a great card. I dig these. Oh, Damien Easley. This is exciting stuff for me. Glad you love it. And a couple more pudges. Those are cool. True these grit. True grit cards. Are really neat. I don't have this. Mm -hmm. Those are. Uh, there's a bunch of different versions of that card, by the way. You can get ours. So now this, the series, series two, they have the, you, you said they have the like, right. So, card stock and so this card is just like the one from series two, base ninety seven score, but the card stock is a little bit thinner, just a little bit, and it doesn't have that gold um, logo there on the bottom. Uh, these these hobby reserves were slightly more premium than the uh, base ninety seven score series two. Well, it's good stuff. Thanks, bro. You're welcome. I'm going to be sticking all the pudges and the uh, the piazzas and penny sleeves as soon as I get in the house, and the rest of the guys are just going to go in alphabetical order. Loving it. It's going to be a beautiful night for me. The wife is going to be angry. <laughs> <laughs> um, Anthony, I'm glad you you know you had a good time today. I, I forgot that I had three more cards to talk about. Oh, these collection. are good ones, too. These are good ones. So let's go through it here. So today, I first thing I got when I got to, to Frank's was I uh, met up with uh, Anthony here at, at a booth that has a bunch of different vintage cards, and I pulled out an Al K line 67 tops. Um, picked this out because Anthony says he's uh, Al K line signs for the mail, and I, I figured I should get a signature of, of his on uh, one of his lighter colored cards, and this is a nice, nice version of, of nice, nice example, should I say? So I guess his return is pretty quickly quick as well. I also picked up a uh, 63 Bell Brand Potato Chips Mari Wills rookie card, quote unquote. Um, I got this for, for pretty inexpensive. Last week when I was at Frank's uh, with Anthony, we Mari Wills was doing a signing and I, I, it was sort of a last minute thing for me and I had like a half an hour to find a Mari Wills card to get signature signed. And I didn't, I couldn't find anybody. I went to every booth and I couldn't find anything. So I ended up just upgrading my autograph ticket to get a baseball and had him sign a baseball. Great stuff. Love it. Met the guy. Nice guy. And this week, I come back and it seems like every booth I went to had a Mari Wills card available, vintage card. So I picked this up in the event that maybe he'll come back and do another signing. I'll be prepared. So really cool card. And these these um, 63 Bell Brands, very highly condition sensitive because the cards were put into the the packs of, of um, potato chips. So you'd have, you know, uh, um, uh, grease spots and they're highly condition sensitive so getting a high grade copy of a card from the set is actually very rare um, but I'm happy to have Mario Wells in the collection now. It's in great condition. It is in great condition. Only only uh, uh, you know setback is there's a pinhole through the top here someone put it on classic behavior from I guess the 60s and 70s. Nothing an autograph can't fix. <laughs> you know I'm still going to love the card regardless. And it's got <laughs> great gloss to it. This, this one I got as complimentary just because the seller didn't want to break a 20. <laughs> so she gave it to me for free. This is the uh, 85 Don Russ Eric Davis rookie card signed. Glad to have this in the collection. This is a really cool card. I have a stack of cards I want to send through for authentication. This, this I think would be a cool 
edition. I don't know when I'll do that, but at some point, I'd like to start sending cards and not authenticate. That is it for another episode of Radicards TV. Thank you for watching. Anthony, do you have any last comments? No, I had a good day. It was a good long day of collecting, and uh, I appreciate you guys watching, and I appreciate you hanging out all day. Thank you. Thank you. Till next time, enjoy collecting.